Postman ain't got the strength to open the letterbox. Reckon he's having a scene with Wanda Pickles next door. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> Money. Oh. Another wedding invitation. Look at that. That's three in a row, isn't it? That's three gallant losers have bit the dust in a fortnight. I reckon it must be something to do with the lead in the petrol fumes. I mean, half the geezers who live near a main road have gone soft in the head. Well, you think about it logically. What is it that comes over a geezer that wants to make him share his dull money with someone else's daughter? I mean, marriage is all right for birds, isn't it? I mean, have you ever noticed when you go to a wedding, they all say to the bride, this is the happiest day of your life. <laughs> Nobody says that to the geezer, do they? The most anyone says to him is, bring it all up, mate. <laughs> You'll feel better. <laughs> well, I must admit, when Artie Johnson married Bubbles Morgan, oh, you might remember Bubbles, they called her that because she had this nasal problem. <laughs> yeah, when she breathes in, it sounds like someone drinking a puddle. Now, them two... <laughs> Artie Johnson and Bubbles, they're made for each other, they are. Because she's ugly and he's repulsive. Oh, he is repulsive. His latest caper is stealing prams in the high street. Every day some mother walks out of Tesco's and a pram's gone. And there's a little nipper sitting on the pavement saying, Why me? <laughs> and as for Bubbles, well, she really is ugly. At the reception, you know, geezers were kissing Artie and saying, Pass it on. <laughs> And when she got to the altar and lifted her veil, the vicar didn't say, God bless you, he said, Go, stone me. No, <laughs> no, seriously, though, I do think some people are made for each other. Last week, I met a bird that was made for me. Hello. You're going to meet a tall, dark stranger. <laughs> That's a Boston Strangler. I'll send him up. <laughs> oh, hello. You're not dark. You're not Mr. Wilkins. Oh, brilliant. That's broke my dream, that has. I had this dream that this wonderful bird turned up and revealed to me the secrets of my birth. Well, at least I now know I'm not Mr. Wilkins. Thank you. Thank you. I am an official of the local welfare department. Oh, that'll do nicely. <laughs> and I am very busy. Is there a Mr. Wilkins living here? And if you're trying to make some sort of an impression on me, a straight yes or no scores double. Uh, no. There, that didn't hurt, did it? Uh, would you like to come in? Come in a minute. Uh, when I said, uh, no, what I really meant was, was yes, so I have got a Mr. Wilkins. Look, Mr. Uh... Uh, London. Jim London. You can call me Jim till we get better acquainted. Look, Mr. London, it's like this. People have either got a Mr. Wilkins or they haven't. There is no halfway. Which would you like to go for? Uh, yes, yeah, so I've got a Mr. Wilkins. He lives up here, as a matter of fact. He's my old squatter. I inherited him with the house. Funny enough, I've never known him as Mr. Wilkins. I normally call him other things, like... <laughs> Do you mind? My tea's getting a bit cold, out there. <laughs> I'm not sure you're fit to be in charge of an old person. I'm not in charge of him, am I? If you want to take him, have him, please. Look, with every Mr. Wilkins this week, I'm giving away uh, one transistor radio, about a pound of sugar, one old kettle, one cup of tea, one jumper as used by Val Dunican, one pair okay, of... Okay, okay, I'll get the message. You obviously don't like the old gentleman. Well, I must have a soft spot for him. I mean, I've, I've got a soft spot for him. I'll save his life twice a day. Oh. Well, I decide to murder him and then change me mind. <laughs> Being serious for a moment and putting aside your obvious pathological hatred for old people, can you just tell me, how is Mr. Wilkins? I'll do better than that. I'll give you a demo, love. Stand it. Ready? Eyes down. Well, that's how he is. I suppose you find that funny. <laughs> Ruining my hair and purposely provoking an old gentleman. Poor old chap. I'll go up and see him. Oh! You'll be sorry. 
Lending tears. Broke the world record for coming down them apples and pears. I must apologise for what I said. I see what you mean. Oh. You all right? Yeah, I'm sorry about the barnet. Anyone want a cup of tea? Oh, yes, please. No. All I try to do is make people happy. Oh. <laughs> well, I bet you won't get the smile off his face for a couple of weeks, and you've certainly uh, cheered me up. <laughs> yes, um, look. Don't mind me asking, I mean, why are you doing all this social work? I mean, surely a nice bird like you could be a model or something. Actually, I used to be a model, but all that hanging around topless in drafty studios, you can't imagine. Oh. <laughs> but, I mean, why social work? Well, it was my dad's idea. He thought it would be good experience, so I'd realise the value of money when I get my inheritance. Oh, well, Daddy got a few bob, has he? Was he a bent milkman? Does the name Guggenheim mean anything to you? <laughs> Not Arnold P. Guggenheim, the uh, millionaire philanthropist and part-time mole strangler. I better go, thank you. Oh, I was only joking. Look, drink your tea. Trying to cheer you up. The only Guggenheim I know is uh, old Mori Guggenheim. He's got the pie and mash shop in the high street. Julie Guggenheim, heiress to the pie and mash empire. Uh, I don't suppose you'd like to come out me one night and have a Chinese, eh? Oh, I'd love to. But we're so short-handed in the department at the moment. By the time I'm finished tonight, all I want to do is jump straight into bed. We can skip the Chinese. <laughs> I don't suppose you fancy, um... Mm, mm. <laughs> helping me sort out the world's problems, do you? Well, what have I got to do? Oh, all sorts. Help people. Go around to old folks' homes and cheer them up a bit. Can't I just stand in Tesco's and smile at them as I go past? <laughs> no. Look, I've got to go. Change your mind. Pop in and see me at the welfare office. It could be our lucky day. And thank you for listening. You are nice. Oh. Oh. Jane. Oh. Oh. Gee, mate, it's tight as in the mould out there this morning. Yes, I was. Uh, I was saying to your mother in bed last night. I said, we haven't had a decent winter since the Harold Wilson government. <laughs> you two have really got the pillar talk off, Pat, haven't you? <laughs> What's that what have you come round here for to reveal to me secrets of the boudoir and all that? No, no, your mother was chucking out a load of old rubbish this morning. Yeah, so now you're looking for somewhere else to stay. <laughs> you don't shut your north and south and listen for a minute, or she'll take this lot home again. Oh, sorry, Dad. What's in there? Well, like I said, your mother was having one of her grand clear-outs. I think it's a change of life. Mm. Hope it finishes soon whilst we've still got something left to sit on. <laughs> What do you want me to hide for you then? What's in there? Is that your, uh, your chest expander kit or your inflatable Doris Day? <laughs> well, uh, these are a few items I managed to salvage for you, as a matter of fact. I thought old Jimmy will take me down and buy me a couple of pints down to Freemasons when he sees this lot. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's much you could get in that bag that will make me buy you two pints down to Freemasons. Go on, try me. There. <laughs> right. I bet you often wonder what happened to him. You read me like a book, don't you? <laughs> what the... F what is that? <laughs> oh, it's Muffin, isn't it? It's old Muffin. <laughs> when you was a nipper, you wouldn't go to bed without him. <laughs> no wonder I'm pulling some iffy-looking birds. I spent me <laughs> formative years kicking with a three-legged donkey. <laughs> oh, hang on. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, but that's brought the old childhood memories flooding back, isn't it? Yes, Dad, a magic moment. Yeah. Who's he? Ah, now that is your uncle Sid on your mother's side, yes, he popped his clogs a few years ago, he did. Well, what's he doing with all this lot? Don't tell me who used to play cowboys and Indians with him when I was a kid. What's he, a bit backward like? No, nah, no, you never knew him, no. Look, look, look. El Alamein, November the 14th, 1943. Oh. Is that when he got killed? No, that's the day he deserted. <laughs> it's a shame to waste it. I thought it looked nice on your wall somewhere. Oh, yeah. What am I going to tell me mates when they come in? Oh, this is great uncle Sidney. When the going got rough with the enemy... He legged it, had it away on his toes. Family tradition, pfft, gone. I don't want strangers looking at me off me wall. Oh, what about all that lot behind the bathroom door then, eh? All personal friends, I suppose. Look, mate, anything to do with Joan Collins, playmate of the month, and me is me own affair. Yeah, well, that's another thing and all. Uh, me and your mother, we've been talking and we uh, think it's time you got married. 
and we want to see a few grandchildren round the place. Father, if you seriously think that I'm going to join the rest of you up the creek just so you and Mum can spoil a couple of ankle biters on Sunday... Yeah, well, that's about the strength of it, son. I mean, well, let's face it. You can't be happy all your life, can you? Hey, eh? It's not natural. And if you're going to hang about waiting for some paid three model with lots of money and an art of gold, you... That's Julie. Hey, eh? Dad, you've talked me into it. Oh, no, look, don't do anything hasty, son. I mean, I'm only a bane all this. Uh, no, come on, I'm going to buy you a couple of pints down at Freemasons. Then I'm going to become a social worker, get married and live the rest of my life on free pie and mash. Oh, my God, what have I done? <laughs> my only current bun, I've driven him round the twist. I'll never forgive myself. No, no, honestly, Dad, you watch. Tomorrow I'm going to start a new lease of life. Yes, yes, of course you are, yes, yes. Now, come on, let's go and get them couple of pints in before the geese in the white coats get here. I wonder if we can get the pick your mother up on the way past. <laughs> Everybody loves somebody sometimes. <laughs> Hello, my dear. I am a social worker, and I see by my notes that you're only 17 years of age, newly arrived from Sweden with nowhere to live. Oh, dear, what a terrible thing. You'll have to go straight round to 17 Railway Terrace. I'll put the kettle on. We'll have a nice sauna and a rub down with a sport in life. Everybody loves her. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's right there, because, yes, tonight, Jim London, this oh, is right. your... Oh, right. Have you never heard of knocking? Yeah, I was going to knock you for a five, right? Eh? fix. No chance. Oh. Well, in that case, while they're thinking about it, what's all this ponced up like a bookmaker's clerk and shouting at yourself in the mirror? It's personal, mate, so I'll be obliged if you keep your big, I suppose, out of it. Oh, no, you've been nicked. Yeah, you've had your collar felt, and you're going down to court to plead insanity. <laughs> if you must know, Mush... I am going to be a social worker. Oh. I think insanity's best. I don't think they'll swallow that social worker stuff. <laughs> no, straight up, straight up. I'm going to be a social worker, then I'm going to take onto myself a trouble and strife. Oh, now you are jesting. Blimey, who'd want to marry you? What's the name, uh, Guggenheim mean anything to you? Guggenheim? What's her second name? That is her second name, you <laughs> oh. No, I don't know any Guggenheims. Oh. I know old Maury Guggenheim has got a pie and mash in the high street. <laughs> Hang about, he's got a daughter, Julie. What, what does uh, uh. social work? <laughs> Stroll on. You, that, you haven't. No, but I'm going to, and I thank you to keep your hands still when you're describing the woman I love. Stroll on will suffice. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Jimbo. Hey, yeah, Jimbo. Here, yeah. no, straight up. You've never cracked it with Julie Guggenheim. I used to go to school with her. She used to show you her knickers for half a Mars bar. <laughs> Do you mind? Blimey, we was only in the juniors. Oh, that's all right then. I could never spare a whole Mars bar. You won't be told, will you? All right, all right. I'll tell you something. You won't last five minutes in the welfare. You've got no patience and no understanding. How do you know I've got no patience and no understanding? Because I'm your best mate. And you've hardly spoken a civil word to me in the last five minutes. It's because you're so thick, it's the only way to get through to you, isn't it? Oh. These old age pensioners, what you're going to help, all ex brain of Britain champions, I suppose. <laughs> all right, point taken. Well, I imagine I'm speaking to you. Only quieter. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. You ain't got a clue, have you, eh? Look, I've come my way round half the welfare offices in London. I know what goes on. Listen, I'll mark your card for you, trust me. Mark me? Last time you marked my card, mate, was over that stuffed dog affair, remember? I nearly got six months in a slam at the trust in you. Well, blimey, you can't get porridge for interviewing a few old age pensioners, can you? With you around, mate, I can get porridge for breaking into a boiled egg. <laughs> Look, sit down there and stop worrying. <laughs> right, now here's the form. Imagine that I'm a dear old lady what's come to be interviewed, right? <laughs> Look at that little red riding hood. The wildlife department's round the corner, darling. Look, will you be serious when I'm trying to help you? I'm oh, sorry. Red. <laughs> right, here I come. Come on, we ain't got all day. Blimey, I'm an old lady, 84 years old. This is it. Go on. Blimey, I'm flat out in top gear and already you're having goes at me. <laughs> Can't you just sit down and get under starters orders and get on with it? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. I expected to see that young lady, Miss Julie. Such a nice gal. 
Although they do say she puts it about a bit. I'm warning you, Josh. You won't be told, will you? I'm an old lady. We speak like that. God blimey, it don't have to be true. Don't take it so personal. We like a bit of scandal. I'm only trying to do you a favour. That's what worries me, you doing me a favour. What's in it for you? There's got to be something. How can there be? God blimey, all I'm trying to do is make sure that me best mate plays his cards right and gets the girl he loves. All right. Is that wrong? All right. I'm, I'm sorry, Tosh. It's OK. If, if you want to get it right, all I'm saying is stay cool with the old brigade. We'll have a, a bit of a rabbit with them. Yeah, then. exactly. That's it, you know. Like, um, how's the family? Mm. Does your grandson take you out on the old banger on a Sunday? And does he want to buy any bent MOT certificates? <laughs> I don't believe it. You don't give up, dear. What a tin nicker of time. This is the best bit of welfare in South London, that is. <laughs> you know, you ain't changed one bit, have you? Remember when we was nippers? They used to say, don't trust that Tosh Carey. He's an evil little git who would steal the pennies off dead man's eyes. <laughs> who told you that? Your mother? No, yours. <laughs> Jim, this is fantastic. I hoped you'd come. Look, I'm a bit busy at the moment. Can you hang about for a few minutes? Me? Can I hang about a few minutes? You're talking to one of the elite, mate. One of the four and a half million. Maggie Thatcher's own. Jim London. Licensed to hang about. I'm mixed with the punters. See you soon. All right. Okay. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> it's nice here, isn't it? Do you uh, come here often? We won't get nothing coming in here all ponced up like that. <laughs> what do you suggest then? A bluey green hat and a red frock? <laughs> do you mind if I have a look at your, uh, the Lingfield runners in the linen draper? No, you can't. <laughs> You're doing well, Jimbo. Good start. <laughs> There's no smoking up there. <laughs> well, I ain't smoking up there. I'm smoking down there. <laughs> Hello, oh. Timber. Still here, mate. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying to get my leg across. <laughs> what do you two want? Well, don't be like that, son. We happened to bump into each other in the Rose and Crown and we thought to let's take a stroll round the welfare, see how Jim's making oh, up. Oh, God, these elephants drunk game out of here. <laughs> yeah, come on, Ernie, let's get down to bookies, mate. There's a better class of misery down there. Hang about, hang about. We're talking about butchers of the future, don't we, Laura and I? Where is she? That's her over there, look. <laughs> in the hat and the red frock. She's working under the covers, you know. Stone, mate, she's uglier than your mother. <laughs> Ernie, what? Ernie, that's Julie Guggenheim. Oh, yeah. That's a bit more like it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget her face. <laughs> <laughs> to think I used to chuck her own work in a puddle. I must have been retarded. All right, you two, well, you've seen her now. Now get on your bike. No, 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 no. I want to, my, I want to give her my blessing or get a free pair of glasses or something. Sorry to keep you waiting, Jim. Well. If it isn't the great Tosh Carey, what are you after? A grant for buying Mars bars? <laughs> they never forget. Filthy beast. Anyway, whatever you're after, you're not getting it. Oh, say that again, gorgeous. Brings back old memories. Ha <laughs> ha. Here, look, you're in charge, Julie. Just can't you get rid of these two from out? Uh, I'm waiting for a note for a pair of glasses. Tosh? I've got to lead him about till he gets his glasses. <laughs> oh, but by the way, I'm Jim's dad. And I want you two youngsters to know that I won't stand in your way. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, I don't know. I know something. Someone's going to murder him if he don't shut up. Do you know what my two greatest assets are? <laughs> <laughs> my two greatest assets are my patience and my understanding. Especially patience and understanding with older people. Oh, yeah. Well, he can't help the way he is, love. He gets it off his mother. She's a right ignorant move. 
But obviously make someone a lovely mother-in-law. <laughs> He's drunk. Ten out of ten. What's all this about mothers-in-laws and you two youngsters and I won't stand in your way? I mean, what does he know that I don't? Nothing. He just says things like that. He's due back in the home any minute now. Yes. Uh, 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 listen, listen, point taken. Say no more. If you want a nice, quiet wedding, that's all right by me. Because I'll wear me plimsolls! <laughs> People that you and me, well, I'm speechless. I wish he was. Yeah, listen, listen in. Oh. oh, there's more, is there? Go on. Listen, go listen. On. Shut up, Dad, for God's sake. Yeah, well, that's the point, isn't it? Religion. Look, now I'm a Christian, and your dad, he's a 4 bit 2 isn't he? There's no problem. That's right, there's no problem. Goodbye. Thanks a bunch, Radio Bloody London. She's got a lovely action. <laughs> oh. Hello. I better get them glasses quick. I think I'm going blind. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry about yesterday, Sam. I mean, if any of your mate Tosh, I would never got elephants. I only had enough for one pint. What do you mean? Well, he kept twisting my arm, didn't he? Kept saying, have another one, Ernie. And he said, come on, let's go and wish the happy couple all the best down the welfare office. Yeah, that was a brilliant idea, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a brilliant idea. He knew that once you'd had a few sherbets, you'd open your big naught myself up like the Blackwall Tunnel, didn't he? Yeah, that's a nice way to talk to your father, isn't it? Hey, that free orange juice has got a lot to answer for. <laughs> morning, chanted evening. You will see us. Oh. Morning, Jimbo. Morning, Ernie. You sound pleased with yourself. I am very pleased with myself, my old Jimbo. And so is one Julie Guggen. I'm very pleased with me and all I might add. Well, at least she was when I left her about four o'clock this morning. I don't believe it. <laughs> How did you? Mm. Stolen last night from Elephant and Castle Good Depot. A lorry containing four tons of Mars bars. <laughs> <laughs> no, we was laughing all night. Uh, with intervals for recreation, of course. <laughs> oh, you make a lovely cup of rosy, Jimbo. Mm. Marvellous, isn't it, eh? Nice as he nicked me bird, he's nicked me bloody tea and all. Here. Here. That lorry you nicked, is it, sir? Uh, it's still there? Yeah, just passed it five minutes ago. <laughs> Here, Dad. Dave, what? Oh, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> hey, no hard feelings, Jimbo. All's fair in love and war, mate. <laughs> yeah, where's the old fella gone then? I oh, was just going to take that teacup for a little walk, that's all. <clears throat> is he going round a twist? No, he's going round to Julie's, isn't he? And he's going to put that cup in the cab of that lorry you half inched. Hey, that's got me prints all over it. All's fair in love and war, mate. <laughs> I've got to get there for the old bill find it. You better get on the starter's orders, mate. Get set, go. Good night. <laughs> Got his prints all over it. Oh, God, ain't that? It's, it's my bloody cup. <laughs> Tosh!